I'm now going to talk to you about Rachel Reich. She's a Dutch painter uh, with uh, a long lifespan, as you can see, from 1664 to 1750. And she's active then from the late 17th century through the first half of the 18th century. She's uh, primarily known as a flower painter. Uh, she paints fruits, flowers, and as we'll see, uh, little animals uh, in uh, some of her flower paintings. She was born in Amsterdam, and her career spans almost 70 years. Her father was a professor of anatomy and botany and was an amateur painter. And so we think that uh, it must have been his encouragement and his example uh, that perhaps sparked her interest. And uh, that knowledge of uh, botany and having all of the specimens around uh, would have given her um, plenty of opportunities to make very, to, to make very accurate observations of uh, the different uh, plants and uh, little creatures as well. She has uh, an international reputation as one of the greatest of the Dutch still life painters. During her lifetime, uh, she uh, commanded very high prices, and her reputation never faltered. Uh, it continues to the, this day. Uh, she has a very enduring reputation uh, for the excellence of her work in flower painting. Now, she, we had mentioned Willem von Alst before as the person who was trying to get uh, Maria von Osterweig to marry him. Well, uh, we're going to hear now about Willem von Alst again. Um, Rachel Reich was apprenticed to him when she was about 15 years old, which would 14 or 15 be a normal year time for uh, someone to be apprenticed. So in uh, 1679, uh, she was apprenticed. And uh, in 1693, she married uh, another painter, in this case a portrait painter, uh, Jurian Poole, and they had 10 children. Now, I often wonder, if you have 10 children, when do you get time to paint? Um, and of course, this was the same question with Lavinia Fontana, and we'll hear of later people uh, with the similar problems. In the case of some of these artists who are, um, who are doing very well for themselves, I assume that they had servants, that they had nannies, uh, governesses, uh, and people to uh, take care of the children, that the, the, all of the 10 children were not, uh, all the child care did not fall on Rachel. Um, in 1701, they moved to Den Hagen, The Hague, uh, where they joined the Painters Guild. And then in 1708 to 16, they moved to Dusseldorf uh, because both were named court painters to the Elector Palatine, Johann Wilhelm von Faltz. Um, and uh, then he died, and uh, the, the couple returned to Amsterdam. There's close to 100, 90-some works uh, that are signed by Rachel Reich. Uh, about 60 of them have dates on them, which is uh, very, very nice. Uh, there's about 35 that are signed but have no dates. And so um, as we're looking at some of these, you'll see little uh, um, bits of information at the bottom that tell you the museum in which the painting uh, is and if there is a date attached to it, what the date is. And so, as you can see, this is from the Detroit Institute of Art uh, and is dated 1704. Rachel Reich has a very uh, distinctive style. Uh, not only are her flowers very accurate, uh, but also she has very dramatic compositions. They're frequently based on a diagonal movement uh, and sometimes also a kind of S or reverse S curve. Uh, she uses a lot of curving forms in her uh, compositions. And of course, you can see this here uh, with uh, the stems. Flowers uh, move up. Uh, the flowers themselves, of course, uh, have a great deal of uh, curving forms. And uh, the leaves. The vessels, uh, it's just uh, based on uh, a myriad of uh, different kind of uh, sometimes very complex curving forms. 
Uh, this painting is undated. It's in the National Museum of Women and the Arts. And one other thing I wanted to point out was that the tabletop or the slab on which the vase rests uh, is very, very polished and it uh, reflects the vessels and the flowers uh, in the uh, marble itself. Uh, here once again you can see uh, very complex curves, just uh, a myriad of shapes uh, with that predominantly uh, diagonal or even kind of uh, S shape to the compositions. Uh, this one's quite complex. It's got uh, diagonals running all sorts of different ways. Uh, diagonals, as you may remember from 